first thing we're going to look at is addition of fractions. And let's use the example two thirds plus one fifth. The first thing we need to look at is well, let's draw what the whole number represents, which is this box. And now let's focus on are two thirds. Could we represent this box in two thirds? So we can split this box into three and we can shade in two thirds. The next step is to say, well, can we look and split this box into fifths? And we can, and we can split it into fifths going the other direction. One, two, three, four, five. And we want to shade in one of those fifths. Now, let's look at what the question is asking us. It's asking us we want to add them together. So we want to add our pink section, which is our two thirds, to our one fifth section here. So when we add them together, we can just count them up. However, there's a couple that are overlapping, so they actually count as two as opposed to one. So let's move the overlapping ones to a free space. Excellent. Now let's count them up. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, all out of fifteen together. So our answer is thirteen out of fifteen. Whoa. Now let's try this using the common denominator method. So two thirds plus one fifth. We can say, let's look and say three and five. Let's get some multiples so we can find the lowest one. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, and let's go with the fives. Five, ten, fifteen. Hold up. We've got 15, which we know is a common. So we will draw and rewrite our fractions as equivalent fractions that both have 15 as the denominator. Here's the step where we have to watch closely. How do we get from 3 to 15? We can see we multiply it by, time, by 5. So that's the same ratio it has to increase when we're multiplying the numerator. So 2 times 5 must give us the new numerator, which is 10. Let's look at the other side. 5 to get to 15, we times it by 3, which means the new numerator has to be times it by 3, which is 3. And we add them together, we know 10 plus 3 is 13 over 15. And that's our answer. Let's now look at subtraction of fractions. So let's do 2 thirds minus a quarter. So the same idea. So we're going to draw out our hole here. And first thing, we look at 2 thirds, and we'll shade it in. And now we want to take away a quarter, so we want to represent a quarter and we'll shade in the pink quarter. Now this time let's look at our operation. We're asking to take away a quarter from the th two thirds. So the two thirds is this white section and we want to take away an entire quarter which is how many pink boxes? One, two, three. Two of these are already taken away because they overlap which means they cancel each other out. But we have not yet taken away this quarter here, or this piece here. So let's overlap it so we can take it away. So we'll move it over here and it cancels out with that one. Just like if you were marking players in a soccer match, you want to make sure they're all matched up. And we count what's left and we've got 5 over 12. And that's going to be our answer, 5 over 12. 
You can also do this using our common denominator as well. Um, and just at the end, you would just subtract instead of addition. Now, the other one that people asked to kind of look at again was looking at the ratios. So, for example, if we were given um, the ratio of for every eight boys, there are four girls. Actually, let's go back and make it a little bit trickier. We'll say for every eight uh, girls, there are seven boys. Or the way around. So every eight boys, there are seven girls. Okay. First things first. Before I'm going to give you the total number of students, we're going to visualize what this ratio looks like. And really what it means, it's a part-to-part -part ratio, which means eight parts are boys and seven parts are girls. So let's simply draw out those parts. How many have we gotten all together? Let's add them. Eight parts plus seven parts is 15 parts. So if I was to draw out the entire whole again, and let's look at 15. So five, we got 15 parts. We know that eight of them are going to be boys. Here's our sections. Four, five, six, seven, eight sections are boys, seven sections are girls. Now, we have just modeled our ratio. Now we can put in our numbers. So, for example, at the start, if I said that there were 60 students in total, then our total would be 60 students. Can we find out what each of these little boxes are if we know that 15 of these boxes here give us 60 students? Yes, we can. We can say 60 divided by 15, and that equals 4. So we know each of these sections is going to be 4 students. Now we can answer any questions we like. So, for example, how many students were boys? We can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight groups of four, which is 32. So we know there's going to be 32 boys. How many were girls? We know that there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups of four, which is 28 girls. And that's how we can approach any ratio problem, is simply by modeling out the ratio first, then worrying about the numbers. Okay, I hope this helps. And as I said, you can use examples for your study sheets and do some practice questions. And we did quite a bit of a review like this today in class, so you should be fine. Best of luck.